Nashville Predators still somehow, some way in the playoff chase. And boy, tonight's game could be huge. Preds take on the Pittsburgh Penguins, who standings wise have the exact same points as the Nashville Predators. We'll talk about that. Plus, what's been up with Mikhail Granlund since he went from the Preds to the Penguins? We'll look into it today on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast available to you wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. Well, here we are, Ann. Still here talking about playoffs. <laughs> I mean, it is... On the one hand, you love it. On the one hand, you love it. Like everybody is here for a dream that's just not going to die. And and to see this spitfire, youth invigorated, revamped Nashville Predators team still chasing the playoffs. I mean, it is the story that just writes itself. But on the other hand, it's just, it's more ambiguity in the future. Did we not like think we wrapped all that up at the trade deadline (laughs) it seems like the cycle for the last month has been admit to just kind of tanking and committing to you know being out of the playoffs go on a wild run find ourselves in the playoffs get two you know a couple of really bad losses be like okay yep we're we're in the you know we're in the doghouse again and then a couple of out of nowhere wins for really good teams and then all of a sudden hey look we control our own playoff fates again yeah Uh, it's 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 a it's a relationship cycle that i'm not sure is super healthy for nashville predators fans but it it does keep the romance alive yeah i mean it's one of these things like we've we've said it you and i have said it before look it's not always um you know, it's it's probably the playoffs shouldn't be the end goal for the Nashville Predators. I, I think it should just be, again, finding little things to work on game by game and, you know, getting these some of these young players up and ready and yes. having them prepare for next season and all that. Uh, but the fact that the postseason is still kind of a byproduct to that, you know, I think that's a pretty cool thing. And. Look, no, it's not exactly like anybody in the West around the Predators are tearing it up right now. And, yeah, you know, very true. And compete. Uh, it, it is, I think, as somebody on Twitter called it, a mid off. <laughs> it is you know, a mid off. Who's going to win the mid off? Who's the, the most season? average? Yeah, who who is going to suck less down the stretch? <laughs> That's going to be key to who hits in the playoffs. Because, I mean, uh, the Seattle Kraken, I mean, they split the series with us, but they've kind of been sliding. Winnipeg has not done well. They've lost two straight after beating us. Uh, yes. You know, Calgary is back in the picture, but but nothing, you know, nothing great. Booming. In fact, kind of the, the two hottest teams – uh, sort of in this in this picture right now are St. Louis and Vancouver, uh, who are who are ten points behind Nashville. But you know, I'm not sure if they're going to catch up. But I mean, that just kind of goes to show you that you know, like if Nashville just kind of plays at the pace they are now, they're going to have a shot. I mean, who even knows? And I love it. I do love it. For them, I will say that in the locker room, I think the the tone is very much what you and I are talking about. I don't think the tone in the locker room is we are going to make the playoffs. We have to make the playoffs. Let's push for the postseason. I don't think that's at all what is necessarily the focus in the locker room. But it does add a little zhuzh to the viewing to earn two points and go, now, wait a minute. Is that little teeny tiny fraction of a gold section in the giant? 
pie chart of playoffs going to widen enough? I mean, it's not like, it's not enough for a full slice of pie by any means, but it just keeps it interesting. It keeps it interesting. If if the Preds make this, mm-hmm. if they get this done, uh, is this the most out of nowhere playoff berth we think they've had? Yes. I think it's I far. I think it's even more shocking than the 2017, you know, got in as the eighth team and went to the Stanley Cup final. This would be more shocking than that for sure. I, I was thinking 2008. Yeah, was, that's true. Was the other one that was like yep. no idea how that happened. I yeah. think a lot. I think like a lot of publications had the Preds uh, penned to be dead last in the entire NHL that year. Mm-hmm. So. But we started this season in our defense. When you look at the roster that started this Nashville Predators season, in our defense, David Poyle had addressed the two glaring holes that we had identified from last season. Yeah. And it really looked like the Predators were going to get something done. Like they were built for a deep playoff run. And then look at us now. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's been a but, season. But, but it's yeah, different context, you know. Like if the Predators were like imagine if the Predators were where they are now and they hadn't traded away anybody. Mm-hmm. They didn't trade Mikhail Granlund, they didn't right. trade Matias Ekholm. Um, nobody was hurt, you know, they were kind of um it, it's, it's still too soon for you for that it's, one. It will always be a little bit too soon for oh, Mikhail okay. or for um Matias at home. Okay. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, we can, you know, we got to talk about it. Yeah. Tanner Jano, all these people, you know, nobody gets hurt. There's a healthy Ryan Johansson, a healthy Phil Forsberg. And the Predators are where they are. That's a failure. 100%. Because you, because you put a team together that, you know, was built for competing in the Stanley Cup finals and that team couldn't get it done. Uh, and now all of a sudden we trade everybody. Everybody is hurt. And this is just okay. These are, you know, our top prospects plus some Milwaukee Admirals, AHL guys. We're just trying to be respectable for the rest of the year and maybe have these guys grow. And all of a sudden, you still find yourself in the same spot. All of a sudden, that mid just happy to get in the playoffs view, that changes. It does. Because now, you know, if the Predators get in the playoffs squeak into the skin of their teeth and still lose in the first round, even if it's like five games, something like that, that is still to me a success because you're doing it with all these young players who are going to be the centerpiece of the new core of your team moving forward. If you do that with the team you had to start the season, I would say you would have to call it a failure, but now with all these new players and young players, the perspective on just getting into the playoffs and be happy being there, that changes. Yeah. It's all about what do you leave the season able to build on? And last season you had a roster that had two players with career, well, three players with career years. You had Roman Yossi lighting it up. You had Forsberg and Duchesne. Mikhail Granlund, who we're going to talk about, had a career year in assists. Uh, You had UC Saros, a Vezna-nominated goaltender. And then you put all of that together and watch them be swept in the first round of the playoffs. It's hard to figure out what do you build on. It's hard to walk away from that season and say, here's what we're going to build on. When you go into whether it is a first round playoff loss, whether it is a regular season, we almost made it to the playoffs, but we didn't quite get there. And you have the roster you have now when you've got these younger players that you know you're looking at for the next three, four, five seasons. You have so much to build on and it just feels different. It feels different. And no matter what happens at the end of this season, it's going to feel a lot better than it felt at the end of last season when the Predators team that was built for a deep playoff run was swept in four games by Colorado. Yeah. Nowhere to go but up, friends. Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, another factor, one of the guys that the Preds lost was Mikhail Granlund, who is now 
on the other side of the ice. The first time the Preds play him since that trade. And things have not exactly gone well for Granlin. So we're going to talk about his uh, stint in Pittsburgh so far. And what do we think went wrong in Nashville? Why did he never catch fire the way we exactly expected him to? We're going to judge that in just a second. But first, want to take a second and mention today's show brought to you by a personal favorite of myself and Anne, Built Bar. If you need a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try Built Bar. Seriously, these are protein bars that taste like a candy bar. What makes them so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Yep, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. There's now a mint brownie puff available for a limited time. Sherry Barcia, the list goes on and on and on. Built Bars taste amazing. They look amazing. But as we mentioned, they're a protein bar and they are packed with 17 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar, and 130 calories. Now you don't need to wait around to get a box either. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy and grab a box of Built Bars. You can grab a four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar uh, box with some little hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. And as always, you can order them on Built.com. See what special flavors they have available for you. Take it from us. You're going to want to try it. Built Bar. Built.com. All right, Ann. Preds versus Pittsburgh Penguins tonight at the Igloo in Pittsburgh Penguins. I, I, It's not the old Igloo, the Civic Center, but, you know, I'm not sure what they call the PPG Paints Arena anymore. Uh, but regardless, the igloo. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, there. it's still the igloo. Yeah. Like, like in Anaheim, the Honda center will always be the arrowhead pond to me. It'll always be the pond. Yeah. Uh, six, yeah. six o'clock puck drop. Uh, yeah. Interesting game. This is the first predators game against Mikhail Granlund. Since that trade deadline trade. Uh, and Mikhail Granlund, uh, the, the trade to the Penguins, not exactly the impact I think Penns fans were hoping Granny Apples would have for them. Yeah, when they made the trade, Mike Sullivan was, you know, of course, publicly very effusive about getting Mikhail Granlund and pointed out, look, this is a guy who can play any position on a line. He's excellent on the penalty kill. They were really looking forward to getting him in there, getting him going with the team. And it's not statistically perhaps gone as they had hoped that it would go in Pittsburgh. He has one goal, two assists, three points in 13 games since he was traded to the Penguins. So what is happening with Mikhail Granlund? Yeah, and two of those three points came in the same game. So he's right. only on the score sheet twice yes. in those 13 games. Two out of 13 games. Um, and, you know, I think we have we were talking about this before the show. We saw some comments uh, from Penns fans that were like, <laughs> shoot the puck, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Shoot the puck. And you were saying it's like, oh, we can we can get you some literature on Mikhail <laughs> Talk, my friend. I know it's one of my favorite shorts that we ever put out where you literally and God love you for it. It was wonderful to watch, and I'm sure it was excruciating to work through, but you lost Remember your that, Jesus right? over Mikhail Granland wide open in the slot. It was a breakaway, wasn't it? I thought he was wide I don't open. Know if it was a breakaway, slot. he was like behind the defense. I can't remember exactly, but it was basically a situation where it was like him and the goalie. And it was like, no, like all you had to do was like, you know, either shoot it or like, or like <laughs> make a move, go to your backhand, forehand, like try to juke the goalie out of his skates. You could have sit there and just done a juggling routine and nobody on the defense would have had time to go and stop you for your juggling routine. And instead he just passes it, he yeah. passes it to somebody who's like, like there's like three defenders between him and the guy 
he had to pass to and nobody between him and the goalie. I can just, I feel you I'm building up to it. about this again, Ann. <laughs> Why did you bring this up? It was so great. If y'all haven't seen that short, it's called Shoot the Puck, and it's one of the greatest. I'm sure it was excruciating for you, but I'm not going to lie. Just sitting here watching it happen was amazing. Yeah. But it was a whole thing. Was it not a whole thing with Mikhail Granlund when so many times, so many times, Penguins friends, so many times we wanted him to shoot the puck, and this is a guy who just didn't yeah. it, it was how did we break mikhail grandland because i think we broke him i remember uh i was doing the trade deadline live stream for locked on nhl mm -hmm. uh when we were talking about grandland and we had hunter hodes from uh locked on penguins on yeah uh, which Preds fans, if you want the Penguins perspective on the game, be sure to check out that show because Hunter does a great job of that. Yes. Um, you know, and I remember him talking and saying, it's like, you know, it's not that, you know, we think Granlin's necessarily a bad player. It's mm -hmm. just that he's not the one the Penguins desperately need. You know, Granlin, yes. Granlin is the facilitator. Granlin is a guy that'll make plays for other people. But the Penguins, you know, have players like that. They needed a finisher. They needed right. a guy that's going to drive to the net and shoot and score. You know, they need a guy to, you know, kind of be next to Sidney Crosby. That'll just take all the great plays that Crosby creates and just, you know, hammer it home. Look finish to be it. the right spot and finish the job. And Granlund is not that guy. He's got a great eye for the puck. You know, he's got a good eye for where people should be on the ice. But again, the, that shot, not quite there. And you mentioned it, Andy. You, you know, you were talking about how did we break Mikhail Granlund. Um, you know, it, it's hard to notice that, you know, he had a 21 goal and a 26 goal season in the, the seasons before Nashville. Uh, you know, 69 and 67 points. So the seasons before he came to Nashville were his career best. And he never really found a way to top that. I, I think it was just him kind of becoming a different type of player. True. And maybe that's a little bit of uh, John Hines. Because I remember he came here under Peter Laviolette. And like, boy, did that not look good. No, it did and not. But he was the first player. Was Mikhail Granlin not the first player under John Hines that you thought, okay, you're tapping yeah. into that guy. You're tapping into what that player can do. You're bringing out something in him that this team needs. In the the before COVID hit in 20, yes. between John Hines and when COVID hit, Mikhail Granlin was the Preds leading scorer and you saw him turn up his game uh, a little bit. I mean, this is a guy who is like, you know, Mike Sullivan on the Penguins said he's played center. He's played wing, right? He's played power play. He's played on the penalty kill. You can kind of use him, whatever he kind of became that guy, but it's almost like he's kind of become, you know, a pass first kind of guy. You know, he's not looking at chances. He's looking at where other people are on the ice. And it's almost like, you know, you, you kind of beat some of that scoring instinct out of him when John Hines took over. Well, and we talked last season as we watched Forsberg and Duchesne's uh, career goal scoring seasons unfold as they kind of race to this franchise record. And you and I said so often the key to that is Mikhail Granlin. Mikhail Granlin is that special sauce. Yeah. But I think that he began to see himself as a guy who sets up the other players. And I also will say he became so important on special teams too. Like I really feel like his role with Nashville, he was so incredibly important on the penalty kill for Nashville. You wonder if just he was so focused in on those roles that this goal scoring sort of fell by the wayside. I don't know, but I will say this. I was a little bit, there was a time, there was a time last season where I thought, David Poyle would not trade Mikhail Granlund for magic beans and an organ on the black market. Like there was nothing that David Poyle would give up to lose Mikhail Granlund because he seemed so key to Nashville's success, to Forsberg and to Duchesne and to special teams. Like you said, this is a guy you plug in anywhere, but 
it did not seem surprising at the trade deadline, the way the team was going. It was a contract that I think was very easy to move at $5 million a year. Um, and the Predators got a second round pick in this draft that's in Nashville. And I think we all know that that David Poyle was all about collecting some some draft capital too. Yeah. It just, it's weird the way his time in Nashville went. It's weird the way his time went. Yeah, I think it's maybe a swing and a miss for Penguins fans for sure. Yeah. Uh, and again, he's still got another year in his contract after this. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what happens this summer if the Pens still feel he's a part of the team or if they'd maybe try to flip him uh, again to try to clear some cap space because um, – we're, and we're going to talk about this in a second because the Penguins, you know, they're getting really good years from Crosby, Malkin, and, you know, to a lesser extent, Chris Letang. And they're still fighting for their playoff lives, which I don't think anybody in Pittsburgh or the NHL said. So it seems like there's going to be uh, some changes there as well. What about this game, Ann? What do we, what do, how do we feel this game is going to go? Let's make some predictions in just a second. Well, we're going to jump on into that, and I'm going to tick off about half my family when we do. But before we do that, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by our great friends at FanDuel. Look, the tournament's heating up. We are down to the final four, and there is no better place to get in on the action. It is not too late, so check out FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will eventually cut down that net. And all of it is on an app that is safe, secure, and super super easy to use. So don't miss your shot on a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right, and so Preds versus Penguins tonight. Some interesting, uh, I guess, dynamics in this game. Uh, Both are sort of fighting for their playoff lives right now. Yeah. They're tied at points wise in the standings. In fact, I believe the Nashville Predators have more wins than the Pittsburgh Penguins this season. They do. Preds are 37, yep. 28 and 8. Penguins are 36, 28 and 10. Uh, Penguins are holding on to a spot. Preds are trying to climb there. But boy, is this kind of a um, two, you know, two very different sides of kind of the same coin here. It is it's so interesting that you say that because as you know, you're looking at this Pittsburgh Penguins team in a lot of ways, it reminds me of where the Nashville Predators were last year, where this is a team where you've got these pieces and you need to make it happen. Like the clock is a little bit ticking on the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're a little bit of an older team. They still have t- a lot of talent. You know, they have uh, one, two, three, four, Five players with 25-plus goals. Nashville has zero players with 25-plus goals. (laughs) We have Duchesne with 22. He's out. We have Forsberg with 19 out. We have Yossi with 18 goals, probably out. And then we have the great hope of the Predators, Thomas Novak. You know, so the teams look different statistically, but I think Nashville Predators fans can understand where Pittsburgh Penguins fans are, where it's like, okay, this is the window for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it's going to close if they don't get there soon. It's really an interesting time for this game to come up because Nashville has turned that page. Pittsburgh is still kind of in the chapter. So let's see what what happens tonight on the ice. You know, anything could happen tonight. If we learned anything Tuesday, it's that anything can happen. <laughs> Your guess is as good as ours. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the Penguins have, you know, a lot of good players. Like we mentioned, Crosby and Malkin both having some really good seasons. Crosby with 85 points. Malkin with 77. Uh, you know, you guys get you have guys like uh, Ricard Raquel with 25 goals. Jason Zucker with 25 goals. Uh, Jake Gensel, again, 67 points. Right. 
really will we ever look older than 13 no these are the things yeah. i want to know about jake gensel will he, you he ever is, look older he has not aged a day since the 2017 no. stanley cup finals yeah um you know i think the problem to me there there's twofold problem one is depth yeah uh, because when you get past those guys the depth just falls off i mean uh jeff carter not exactly what they're hoping for Mikhail Granlin, not exactly what they're hoping for. You know, you guys have guys have guys like Ryan Poling and Dan Heinen who were, you know, top prospects at one point, but haven't quite become uh, what people thought they were going to become. And then the other thing, and is just is goaltending. Yes. This year. That is an area where they just haven't been able to kind of figure out what's going on. You know, for a while you have Tristan Jari, you know, kind of looks like he's, taken hold of goaltender of the future and then has just a very, very bad run of games. Uh, although he did have a uh, pretty decent performance against the avalanche, uh, you know, he last did. week. Uh, then you have Casey DeSmith who, you know, kind of sometimes looks like he's going to jump up and steal the number one job. I mean, he started uh, three consecutive games for the penguins and, then he goes out and gives up six goals to the Detroit Red Wings the other night. So yeah. they just haven't been able it's, it's, you know, the Pittsburgh Penguins goaltending situation. is like the Katy Perry song, hot and cold. Yes. Just, you know, all of a sudden you have two guys that look up and look like they're stepping up and carrying this team. And then the next week, you know, goaltending is the biggest question mark for the entire Penguins organization. So those are two very big reasons I think the Penguins are where they are right now. And if you're the Nashville Predators, you look at some of the goaltending, you got to be thinking, okay, this is a night where we just have to kind of swallow our pride and shoot whatever we can on net. Just get pucks to the net, just get guys in dangerous areas, and let's see what happens. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, This weekend, my son got married. So lots of family in from Pennsylvania. And I was talking to someone named Scott, won't mention his last name because Scott will not be okay up in Northwestern Pennsylvania, having said anything remotely critical about the Penguins, huge Penguins fan. But goaltending is such a concern to them. And it's like you said, you look at their statistics, they're 908, 906. Those aren't horrible statistics. But it's game by game performance that is really a concern when it comes to goaltending. And I agree with you, even defensively, there are, there are opportunities here against the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, they're 20th in goals against if Nashville can put some shots on net, get some traffic in front of the net, get another Cody glass, some tip in goals, you know, block their lines of sight. I think this could be a really good opportunity for Nashville to spark offense that they've struggled a little bit in some of these last couple of games to really get significant offense going. So there's an opportunity tonight. And hey, I'm not picking on Sidney Crosby, but I just want to read a couple stats. Oh, no. <laughs> Now, now you're going to feel the wrath of Penguins fans. Now, I've, and you know what? I'm going to sleep fine tonight, win or lose. Um, Sidney Crosby has three goals in the last 10 games. Here is what Nashville is bringing to the ice. Uh, Cody Glass, three goals in the last 10 games. Kiefer Sherwood, three goals in the last 10 games. Luke Evangelista, three goals in his last seven games. Thomas Novak, Tommy freaking Novak, Four goals, six assists, 10 points in the last 10 games. Look, you don't, nobody in Pittsburgh is going to have any idea who those four guys are when they take the ice. They're just not going to know their names, and, and I don't fault them for that because we're all learning as we go. Yeah. But it's not that Nashville can't bring some, some spice to the table. So this is going to be a game where Glass, Evangelista, Sherwood, Novak, they're going to need to do exactly what you say. This is an opportunity to crank out some offense. Let's get that going. Yeah, and not just that, but we talk about the the Penguins' lack of depth. You know, you look kind of on that third and fourth line, guys like Colton Sissons. Come on. He's going to have some opportunities to kind of push the issue a little bit. Cole Smith, who I thought, you know, cover your ears, a lot of Preds fans, has played very well uh, these yes. past couple weeks. Same for Yakov Trenin. You know, you guys got guys like Kiefer Sherwood, who's kind of bouncing around on lines at the moment. 
Mark Jankowski. So there's a lot of guys on the Predators lineup that I think have been playing some pretty decently good hockey, you know, decent to good hockey that, you know, you look at this, the Penguins and their kind of depth struggles. Maybe this is an opportunity. It's like, these are matchups you got to win. Yes. Like you, your third line's got to take advantage of their third line and your fourth line's got to take advantage of your fourth line. We know Sidney Crosby. We know he's going to be a danger anytime he's on the ice. Same for Malkin. But win the matchups, you can win. And take advantage of your opportunities. I think that is how, the, if the Nashville Predators wind up winning this game, I think that is how they have to do it. Yeah. The other thing I would say is let's make this a 60-minute game. Let's play 60 solid minutes of hockey, because if you look at the Penguins over the month of March, this is a team that has come from behind. You know, they came from three nothing down to tie the game in Detroit. They ended up losing that game. But you can't give a lag or a lull in your performance if you're the Nashville Predators against this team. The other thing you don't want to do, let's just not take this to overtime. Because Pittsburgh is very good in overtime. Uh, yeah. Chris Letang is a little bit magic in overtime. So they've won three of their four overtime games this month. Let's just wrap this shit up in 60. Can we? I, I would love for that to happen. <laughs> but who knows? Please. Here's the bottom line, friends. Yeah. Who knows? Who yeah. knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, the, the cleaner we can make this game, the better. I have a good feeling it's not going to be that way. I have a good <laughs> feeling that one way or the other, we're going to be kind of uh, clinging to our seats. And, you know, the other wild card is the Penguins kind of desperately yes. hang on to their playoff spot. So, you know, you're coming out with a very motivated Pittsburgh team. Very true. Uh, it's going to be interesting to say the least. Six o'clock puck drop from, again, whatever the you know, PPG paints arena is called now. I still think it should be called the igloo because the penguins play there. Who knows if you're a penguins fan listening, let us know what the, <laughs> name of the arena is. Uh, and we'll have full recap of course, tomorrow on locked on predators podcast. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at inside the You can find me on Twitter at ANK underscore mama on ice. You can find me at Twitter at underscore NS Morgan, because I'm not on on the fort check anymore. There will be an announcement about some future opportunities coming up. Don't you worry. Also, for now, be sure to follow the podcast at LO underscore Predators. Uh, and however you're listening to us, whether you're watching us on YouTube, listening on your favorite podcasting platform, whatever, hit that subscribe button. That way you always know when we have fresh stuff out for you and helps us out with the numbers a little bit. That's going to do it for us on today's Lockdown Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Back tomorrow with Pred Pens Recap.